Hey YouTube, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at GPU scaling with LM Studio. So in this video, what we're gonna do, we're gonna demonstrate what happens if you have multiple graphics cards in your system. So the system we're using here for this demonstration is the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 9960X. The CPU doesn't really play a huge role in AI. The main reason why we're using Threadripper is because it has so many PCIe lanes to allow for multiple graphics cards. So right here, I have three different graphics cards installed. So I have an AMD Radeon Pro W7500, a Radeon AI Pro R9700. So this one has 32 gigabytes of VRAM. So you can tell that's an AI GPU. And then we have the Intel Arc Pro B50. So another professional graphics card, which is actually being used to record this video right now using the built-in encoder. And this one has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So what we're going to do is with LM Studio, you know, you can download multiple different models. So here what we're going to do is we're going to go to the developer, click on LM Runtimes in the upper left here. And you'll notice that based off of the hardware, so here we have three GPUs, as I pointed out earlier, and the nice thing about LM Studio is it tells you the VRAM. So if you're not someone who is accustomed to just using Task Manager to tell you how much VRAM you have, which it does do down here, you can also just look in LM Studio. And you know it gives us information like the memory, the system memory, and the total VRAM. So the nice thing about this is because we have all three of these GPUs, we have 32 plus 8, which is 40, and then an additional 16. So that's 56 gigabytes of video memory which is reflected here in the memory capacity so the system ram is there which can be used if the model if it's configured to roll over into system ram if you don't have enough vram but because we have so many gpus vram is not really going to be a problem or at the very least it's going to enable us to scale up across these gpus if more vram is required so the strategy here is split evenly but what we can do is we can disable some of these to try to force it on only one GPU. So to start off, we're going to only use the AI Pro R9700 because this one has 32 gigabytes. And usually the rule of thumb is to utilize a GPU that has as much VRAM as possible because you'll get better performance. So meaning one GPU will outperform multiple graphics cards for a given AI workload, as long as the AI model can fit within the VRAM capacity. So in this case, 32 gigabytes of memory. So what I'm going to do here, we can't use Rockham. You can see Rockham is not compatible. The reason why Rockham is not compatible, even though we have AMD GPUs installed, is because of the Intel graphics card. So if I want to gain access to Rockham, I have to disable the Intel GPU so that LM Studio doesn't recognize it or I have to physically remove it from the system. So that's how to get Rockham working. Same thing with CUDA. CUDA is also not working. Obviously here, CUDA is not going to work because I don't have a NVIDIA GPU installed. But even if I did, it would also be disabled in the same manner that Rockham is disabled here. So you can see that there. So that means that with this ragtag of different vendor GPUs, in this case we have AMD and Intel and another AMD, we're going to be leveraging Vulkan on Windows for the actual model's runtime. So that's what's going to be used. And then we're going to go ahead and load a model. So let's load the DeepSeq 32 billion parameter here. And you can see the nice thing about Task Manager. You can see Task Manager filling up. You see 21 gigabytes out of 32 gigabytes. It's being loaded into the VRAM so that it can be used. So here it's loaded now. So let's do a compare and contrast Silent Hill, since this is on Halloween, Silent Hill and Resident Evil. So let's see what it does. So Deep is gonna think about it. Okay, so this is the reasoning model. And you can see this is kind of the performance on a single GPU where the entire dedicated memory is being utilized so here because it's a 32 gigabyte gpu we're using about 23 gigabytes of vram which means something like an rtx 4090 or a radeon 7900 xtx 
would be just enough to manage to fit the 32 billion parameter deep seek model that anything above this would exceed what you could do on a 24 gigabyte gpu hence the reason why we're using a 32 gigabyte graphics card for ai because it allows us to run larger models and you can see it uses up a lot of vram so here we go so 27.33 tokens per second that was the the deep seek 32 billion number here so that's actually pretty good so let's go back to the runtime now and now what i want to do is i want to actually enable multiple gpus or actually what i want to do first before i do that i want to load the 70 billion and see if we can actually load that into this gpu so we're still using one gpu and now we're loading the 70 billion parameter model and let's see what it does so it's, it's not going to use the other two gpus and here it's starting to load shared gpu memory because it's exceeding the 32 gigabyte frame buffer available and what that means is the shared gpu memory down here this is actually system ram so it's actually using the memory from the cpu to be able to load this model so now i'm going to basically ask it the exact same question compare and contrast well actually let's ask it a little bit different fatal frame fatal frame and silent hill so let's see so now because we're using shared memory which is basically system memory it's actually going to perform a lot slower because system ram is not nearly as fast in terms of the memory bandwidth compared to the vram so you can see it's having to think about it it's taking a lot longer to process the prompt because it's going on shared memory and you can see in general it's a lot slower than when we were running the model the, the 32 billion model which would fit within a 24 gigabyte frame buffer so here this uses more than 32 gigabytes so it spills over into the system ram you can see it's using a lot of system ram as well but it is still able to run so this is kind of the way to do to run larger models if you don't have enough vram you can still do it it's just you can see the performance basically suffers as a result of this but it's working so we're going to go ahead and let this play out and see what the number the token number is and then we're going to go ahead and try multi gpus so basically you want to avoid using shared gpu memory if at all possible but if you want to run these higher end models that have more parameters and give more detailed and better responses you would either have to have a GPU with an enormous amount of VRAM or you would have to start scaling up across multiple graphics cards, which is what we're going to show here. So you can see 3.66 tokens per second. So definitely a lot slower because of the shared GPU memory, which is basically system RAM. So now what we're going to do, we're going to try the same thing, only we're going to leverage and we're going to turn on, we're going to enable the other two GPUs. So now we have all three GPUs. Now we have a 56 gigabyte VRAM pool available. So we're going to reload the model here. I think we have to reload the model. Yeah, we have to reload it so that we can get it into these guys. See, when you eject the model, see how the VRAM here is basically flushed back down. See how the system memory got freed up. We freed up a whole bunch of memory by letting that go. So that, it looks like that took up a whole lot of system RAM. So let's go ahead and now load the 70 billion parameter model into memory and see what we get. So now it's going to load it up and you can see the Radeon Pro W7500 is also getting loaded up and the Intel GPU is also getting loaded up into the VRAM. But the 9700, because it has the lion's share of VRAM, it's going to get the most. You can see it's using 26 gigabytes of VRAM. Intel's using about 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And the, the little AMD GPU is using 6 gigabytes of VRAM. So I like how it kind of spread that out. You can see, so 6 gigabytes plus 26, so that's 32 plus 12. 
So 44 gigabytes of VRAM to load this model. So now let's go ahead and do one final test here. Compare and contrast. Compare and contrast Silent Hill, Resident Evil, and Fatal Frame. All right, let's see. So already, you I can tell that it's slower than the smaller model on a single GPU, which is expected because scaling up across multiple graphics cards is always going to be slower than if you were to run the model in one pool of VRAM on a single graphics card because this requires that the model spread out the traffic over the PCIe bus to communicate between these graphics cards. And you can see the Radeon Pro is doing about this much compute, that much 3D. The professional W7500, it's, I don't know, it's, it's interesting. This one's like computing real fast and stopping. And then the Intel one, uh, we have to actually go to, I'm not even sure what we need to look for on the Intel one to see that. Are we looking at the compute yeah so on the intel one you want to look at the compute so here intel vulcan is leveraging the intel pro b50 you can see it's about 39 percent load the radeon ai pro 9700 is about 28 25 percent load on compute and six percent 3d this is using the vulcan obviously and then the professional radeon the small card is there's a single slot card with no with no PCIe power cable. This one's the lowest end one out of the bunch. And it is well actually, I don't know. The B50 is newer, but both of these cards are I would say equivalent performance wise. Neither one of them have PCIe power cables, but the Intel one has double the VRAM, so I think it's gonna end up doing more work than the W7500. But you can see that the 70 billion parameter model is performing better with the three graphics cards versus when I was using shared GPU memory, which is basically system RAM. So here we don't have to leverage the system RAM as much. It's maintained within the dedicated GPU memory on all three graphics cards. So you can see we did about 6.42 tokens per second. So that's about double the performance of using system ram plus the radeon pro 9700 so that is a quick look at how well deep seek performs across multiple gpus so real quick i'm going to run the open ai just to get an idea here of how the the gpt oss 20 billion runs on here so this one will probably run pretty good so now we can see it's using about 2 gigs on the W7500, 10 gigs on the Radeon 9700, and 4.4 on the Pro B50. And again, we're going to ask it, then we're going to ask OpenAI's model, compare and contrast Silent Hill, Resident Evil, and fatal frame. So let's see how well the OpenAI one goes. So this one goes pretty fast. So thought for a brief moment, and you can see. I notice OpenAI likes to do these tables when you have, have it compare stuff. So the GPT. So you can see, it's using the compute blocks. You can see there, and it's already done. That was pretty quick. So 52 tokens per second using the OpenAI 20 billion. So that gives you guys an idea of how to run AI, at least the LLMs using LM Studio and the fact that it can scale across multiple graphics cards. So for those of you that are thinking about dabbling in AI and you have a current generation graphics card and you have an old graphics card that you still have as a spare, you can, depending on your motherboard, you might be able to put it in and leverage it for running larger models. So hope you guys found this video useful. I actually think it's really cool that 
you can use multiple vendors like different brands of graphics cards together like this to run really large models so that's kind of the benefits of using Vulkan on Windows so if you guys found this video useful let me know your thoughts in the comments section